we are in we look the day is not going to be as hot today as it was yesterday yesterday was like record breaking hot um today doesn't look nearly so bad on the forecast hopefully they killed the right chickens so um, i really like we look it's a nice little area there's a quite convenient little shop around the corner um, there's, you know... Well, half an hour walk from Sandbach, or an expensive five-minute bu five bus ride. Yeah. Um, but it's a really nice town. Um, and just, like, because there's, like, a little wharf up there um, with the water point and the shower, it's just convenient. And there's a nice set of visitor moorings. Just a nice place. Yeah, definitely. If you're going through here, Wheelock's a good place to stop. One thing that's not so good about Wheelock is it's the George Ball... Ah, uh, yes, Bermuda well, triangle. it is the Bermuda Triangle with George's ball. He's lost five balls. <clears throat> five balls. We've been here two days. He's lost five balls. Technically, we got one of them back. Okay. Four. So, yeah, we're heading south towards, I don't know where, Stone, Stoke-on-Trent, Red Bull, whatever Red Bull is. <laughs> Red Bull. I think it's a marina mine. Michael's quite excited about the... What I've got Michael. a long-standing addiction to Red Bull. It's been... Four years. Almost, almost five years. Uh, four years? Yeah. It's been four years since I've had a Red Bull. I can still, to this moment, dream of the... Uh, it's I hate Red Bull. It tastes terrible, but it is very addictive. It's been three years since I've had a Coca-Cola. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Which isn't half as hard as a Red Bull, but she the makes addiction, it sound worse. The, addi the addiction is the squid. <laughs> What? It is. It's the sugar. It's true. It's the sugar. It's in terrible the, stuff. It's the sugar in the cafe. You know, you can, you can clean a diesel. With, you, I, with, yeah, you wouldn't want to use Red Bull, but you could totally use Coca Cola to clean an engine. I used to have like one a good day. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, sidetrack. So, yeah, today we're heading south on the Trenton Mersey Canal. It's just lock after lock after lock. So, I don't know how far we're going to get. The first lock's just that way a little bit. Um, and it's the. We've only ever seen this once before where you've got two narrow locks but they're next to each other so two boats can go through at once in theory. Um, in opposite directions or all the same even direction. potentially in the same although that would lead to all sorts of traffic issues on the other side. Um, but first we're going to back up to the wharf because I did lots of work on the boat in the heat yesterday morning and I just want to wash off oh, the surface I pre prepared yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so that'll take probably 20 minutes and then we're on our way. First, a short reverse back to the water point. Secretly, I think Michael enjoys reversing as he gets to show off his reversing skills. But if you notice him reaching down occasionally, you'll realize he has a little bit of assistance from our trusty bow thruster. At the water point, I take the opportunity to clean the side of the boat where I sanded yesterday, and then we apply fur tan rust converter to the rust spots. The beginning of a cruise may not be the most sensible time to apply fur tan, but we did it nonetheless, and now you know why our boat suddenly has a spotty appearance. It's finally time to set off on the day's cruise, and it's just a few hundred meters to the first lock. This boat has just come down the lock, so we think that at least one of the two locks will be set in our favour. But that isn't the case. There's a boat coming down the offside lock, and we can't use the towpath lock either, as the upstream paddles have been opened to fill the lock for the boat still in the lock above. So, I help the boat through the offside lock, and when they leave, Michael can come into that one. The boat is exiting the towpath lock just as we are getting ready to leave our lock, and they kindly leave the gates open for us, but Joe has to close our gates as they are using the other lock to go down. Here, the offside lock is already lowered, so it's just a case of opening the gates. A boat has just come down the next lock, so we swap places, passing in the middle of the pound. A 
I wonder why it is called Clearwater Lock. The water clearly isn't clear. You may be wondering why Michael didn't pull into the towpath side lock. Well, it may have looked like the gates were open, but they'd actually been removed and the lock filled in. I reached the next lock first. There's a bridge blocking the view of the lock, so I secure the boat to the lock landing and walk up to see what's going on. It turns out there's a boat coming down the offside lock. They wouldn't have been able to see our boat waiting either, so I let them know we are below the lock and they will now leave the gates open for us. Cardboard lock seems like a very strange name for a lock, but we think it's because there was once a paper mill near here. At this lock, the water's already down in the offside lock, so it's just a case of opening the gates. George is clearly finding all these locks exhausting. After the cruise, we learn that the section of the Trent and Mersey between Wheelock and the summit of Kidsgrove has earned the nickname Heartbreak Hill, though its official name is the Cheshire Locks. There are 26 locks to navigate in just seven miles. Originally, they were built as single locks in 1770, but as this section proved to be a bottleneck, most of the locks were duplicated to ease the congestion. Today, we are doing 10 of the 26 in less than two miles of canal. Most of the locks are double locks, although as we are finding on some of the pairs, one lock may have been taken out of commission either temporarily or in some cases permanently. I'm loving this towpath walk. There are so many wild flowers and butterflies about. Someone has carefully marked these flowers with fragile tape. Can anyone tell us what they are? This is the M6 motorway bridge. I wonder if any of the cars hurtling along above have any idea that I'm down here waiting to go into a lock. The last lock of the day and there's only one lock operational here. It looks like the offside lock was filled in some time ago. It makes rather an elegant overflow instead. We take the first available mooring above the lock and hope that the motorway is far enough away that we can't hear it. It was just locks today. I don't think we've come very far, but it was so many locks. Yeah, it wasn't really that many. It was a grand total of nine locks. It really felt like more than nine. We had to fill them quite slow because, um, well, the very first lock we went into, it wasn't like you opened it any faster than normal. No. It was just that that design of lock, it sort of pulled me backwards and then I slammed forwards. And, and when I slammed forwards, the bumper got caught on the, um, I guess, plate. the sort of rough portion of the rubbing plate. There's a steel plate up above and then there's a concrete and wood piece down below. We hit the concrete and wood piece and then the front of the boat started to tilt under. So I had to yell at Joe to, to um, well, not really stop the lock, but at least slow it down. Yeah. And then we came free as I was able to finally reverse back. It was safe and we were moving up and everything. It's just like every lock or every set of locks are different. Usually within the set, they all behave in a similar way. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've been doing narrow locks for months and months and months and didn't have one that was quite this violent. No. So I think that's the biggest bump we've had in the lock because <laughs> this happened. Yeah. I think you can see. 
Our, All our baked beans jumped out of the um Yeah, we've got the, the what about six or seven cans of baked beans sitting in the uh, uh there's a cupboard above our cooker and it's pretty stuffed full of, of things. And on the right hand side it's a bunch of, of baked tins, uh, uh tins of baked beans and tins of tomatoes and everything. And I guess there was enough velocity that the whole thing flew open and all the tin things. Yeah, all the tins ground. came out. That one said worse. Uh, we've got. Um, I wonder what it hit. I don't know. It it's must just be the a, size. Yeah, but it's quite a, <laughs> quite a substantial dent. dent and sort of a straight line. Like it must have hit something pretty hard. I don't know how I'll get that one open. And there was um, a saucepan on the hob. That was on the floor. We've oh, got... that's probably what it hit. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. There's three bottles of oil sitting on the side. The two that were shut fell over, didn't open. The one that we left open... Which we shouldn't do. We shouldn't have, was just stand it. It's still um, standing. So yeah. if that one had fallen over, we'd have cooking <laughs> we'd oil. We'd still be cleaning up vegetable oil from the bottom of the boat. Um, yeah, lots of cupboards flew open, lots of bits of paper like flew off the shelf, got a pot of coins, that was everywhere. Yeah. Book cupboard, that opened. So basically, if it was if it was mobile and heavy, it got thrown all over the place. So, <laughs> so from that point on, every one of the locks Joe had to open quite slowly, really which meant slowly. we had to raise really slowly. Like I do, when you raise those um, narrow locks, you can hear the suction of the water as it starts to go. So as soon as I heard that, I'd stop and um, yeah, and then we and then wait and wait and wait. We basically move up at about half the normal speed. Yeah, we passed one boat at some point. Um, it was near where there was the boat yard. I don't know if you saw that. You saw a boat yard? Oh, oh yeah, where, the, yeah. where the arm thing was. Yeah, yeah, there's like a little arm where there's a boat yard. Yeah. And we passed one boat, and as we went by it, like, I can't... I pass boats and I try and look at the boat. I don't really ever try and look in anybody's windows or no, anything. No, it's really tempting, though, because I'm really interested, but I hate it when people do it to us, so, like, you just don't do it. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the boat, but every once in a while, you know, you'll, hear, you'll see a flash of movement. And, and, your, eyes and your eyes just snap on what the fashion was. Did you see someone naked? <laughs> and she was like, um, just getting dressed. Like she was just, she was pulling her shirt sort of on. No. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so um, quite a few boats going the other direction today. But yeah, the first lock, a boat came out just as we were set, like setting off. So we passed it and then we had like a like 100 meters or so to get to the lock. So I was like, oh, it'll be in our favor. And I got to the lock. And there was one boat going in, and the other the other lock was nearly full. So she'd filled both of them, one for her and one for the boat behind her. She didn't bother to look down the canal to see that we were coming, mm. and that she could have filled the other one with us in it. Yeah. Because that boat was still above the next lock. So she was trying to be helpful to that boat, but, but didn't consider sort of, that there's a boat com like, there could be a yeah, boat. Mind coming you, in. it would have been really hard to see from where she was. Yeah, but then you don't do it, or you you just you just walk down the steps. And look. Anyway, it didn't really matter, but yeah. it just just to save water. It's not like really to save our time. No. It's just to save water. No, the, the reason I mentioned the passing the the boat naked and girl. the girl thing, not naked. She was just. She, it, it's just. I I think she was on one of the boats behind us, and I'd rather be inside when they pass and not see. Because <laughs> I'm like, I swear to God, I tried to look away. I looked away. As soon as I saw and, and I registered that there was a person in there, I went, nope, and I looked somewhere else. We're upable. That was exciting. The are upable? Upable. Upable. Oh, up a ball. Ah, okay. Because yes. we told you the thrilling story this morning of how George lost five balls. Well, um, in one of the locks, before one, before one of the locks, we saw a tennis ball. So we went to great lengths to fish it out. So now we're. But we're still negative two orange, good ones. Yeah, we're at minus three balls at the moment, and two of the important ones. So, so Joe George is now at a about an eight pound debt. All right, that's all right. He can make that up. I think we have to figure out a way of monetizing him. <laughs> if anyone wants to sponsor George's balls, then. Uh... <laughs> Because you know they have these things in the states called nudicles, where they like oh, when like when they neuter the dog, they implant like it's silicon rubber. <laughs> like if, if anybody, because George needs his confidence back. That's the problem. Basically, we need to pay to give George back some nudicle. Um, good lord, this has gone this off is the rails. A turn. <laughs> uh, so now, where are we? We should probably say that. Winslow Green, I think it's called. 
castle ring. <laughs> well, really, I, I got the green part right. We've really literally come about two miles today. Yeah, no, we haven't traveled very far. We're about a day from the northern end of the Hare Castle Tunnel. Yeah. So I think we might move down there tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. Ah. The Hare Castle Tunnel, 2,926 yards. Have we decided whether I'm walking over the top or going through the tunnel with you? I have no idea what you've decided. I'm assuming we're going through. No, me. And yeah, I'm assuming you're going through. How do you feel about Cause it? Because I George? prefer it when you go through. Because then I don't have to worry about you getting lost up top there. Because <laughs> I know exactly where I am. Yeah, so thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Uh, if you feel like it, hit the subscription button and then click the bell if you want notifications. Good? Yeah, it's really right. good. Excellent. Glad to get that straight so I can get out of here. And we can't use the towpath lock either. And we can't use the towpath lock either. And we can't use the towpath lock either. Are you laughing? <laughs> Just it's it's hard. As the upstream paddles have been opened, as I still feel like I'm going too fast. Well, slow down. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Good good call. And they will now leave the goats up. The goats? <laughs> You're doing so well. Um, yeah, yeah. Comedic timing. It's the mastery of comedic timing that you've really got to have. Is that thing recording? Yeah. No man, Jojo laughs. <laughs> like ridiculous. <laughs> we more up, and we like. Why'd you call me a knobhead? Yeah. <laughs> like we've been a bit stressed today for various reasons. And um, Mike was staring at the canal behind and he was like, deadly serious, wait, is that what I think it is? Like, I can't express how serious he was. And I'm looking and I cannot see anything. And he went, no wonder the canal is, gone, is brown here. Yeah, no, I said, I figured it out. Oh. And you were like, what, what? And, and like, you could pause, I pause. <laughs> I'm like, I, I know why the canal is brown. And she's like, why? I'm like, the tea bag. <laughs> See, it's not funny. It's not funny, but he just didn't laugh. Look on her face. Yeah. And no more tea bag jokes. <laughs> as soon as tea I said it. Tea bagging doesn't have the same meaning. It does. It does? Okay, good. As soon as I said it. Because <laughs> no, we've already talked about knobhead tea bagging, and there's a prince in Albert beside us. So, um.